Hey guys, it's Agustin Turner again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm going to continue the videos with virtual reality development. We're going to be focusing on XR socket interactors provided by the XR toolkit. So what are these interactors? How do we use them? And you can see the video from playing behind the scenes. Basically, it allows you to restore the position of an object by showing you an overlay. So what I can do is I can grab an object, pick it up, and then as soon as I put the object and the collision happens, it's going to tell me where the original position was so I can let it go. And it's basically gonna snap on at that previous position. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. The way that it's gonna work is going to allow us to place an object, say that I pick up this object. Then as soon as I pick it up and I move it around, I'm gonna be able to put it around the socket, which is basically going to put it back in place where it was before. Currently, this scene is the one that Unity provided for you know multiple examples with the XR toolkit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be extending it a little bit and show you how to set up sockets from the very beginning. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm going to be cloning the workbench that we have right here. And this scene also has teleport, so these circles that you see right here are all teleports. So I'm going to be placing a couple of them so that I, we can move around. So I'm gonna put one right here. We're gonna be just putting this table right here so we can we can just grab a couple of more items and something like that works. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the teleport here. Let's go ahead and change this to global and coordinates and then I can just move it right here. And I'm just gonna get it really close to the table so that way we can concentrate on you know, selecting and grabbing the items that have a socket interactor. Okay, so everything, that looks good. Then what I'm gonna do, some of the things that I wanna grab is I wanna be able to grab the paint. So I'm just going to, let me clean up everything here. And I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and go into game object, create an empty. I'm gonna just call this one environment. Unity doesn't do this in their projects, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it because I think it's gonna make it, it's gonna make it a lot easier. And I'm gonna move everything inside environment. Everything that is an asset. And then I'm also going to be moving this. The starting area, let me look at the starting area. We can also move that as well. Perfect. That way I can focus on, you know, the new things added outside and then I'll put it back inside of the environment. Awesome, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be, I want to be able to grab the paint, so I'm just gonna clone the paint. I'm also gonna be putting it outside the environment. And then we can just go ahead and hold our V key. That way we can snap to vertices like we like I'm doing right now. It's gonna go get closer here. I'm going to also make sure that there's no rotation on this item. And we can, actually, we can just go ahead and add some rotation. I'm gonna show you a trick because I want to make sure that this is, the rotation on this object is clean. So actually, I'm gonna make it zero. And then we can go back to it and, and fix it. Then I'm just gonna clean up this name so that we can, we can just concentrate on, you know, keeping things clean. And then the other thing that I'm also, I'm also going to do, let's go ahead and grab the hammer that we have here. And then I'm just gonna go, all the way up and we can put it right next to the paint. It's gonna go ahead and rename it. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna hold my V key. That way we can snap it and go ahead and hit F so we can get closer. And there we go. Then I'm also going to be removing the rotation. There we go. And something like that works. We can just probably, we can probably just do like 90. I think 90 is fine. Then I'm just going to I'm going to, let's actually set it to zero. I think everything needs to be clean and then and then we can change it later. And it's gonna put the hammer right there. We're gonna put the pin right here. And all of that looks, looks good so far. Let me move it back a little bit more. Something like that works. And then maybe this one bring it in a little bit more. Okay, so what do we need to do to be able to grab this subject? It looks like the, the hammer already has uh, extra grab interactable. So let's go ahead and remove it. I just want to show you from scratch what you need to do to make this work. I'm just going to remove all these different components. So we're going to have a very clean hammer. The paint doesn't have anything because that wasn't an object that Unity was allowing you to grab. So what I'm going to do is on these two objects, I want to add a couple of more empty objects. It's going to go ahead and, and I'm going to drop these empty, empty objects inside of paint and one of them inside a hammer. And I'm gonna show you why that is. I'm gonna set it to zero, 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 so that it is at the pivot point. I'm also going to do that here. Perfect. And then this one is going to be the, the actual attach. So I'm just gonna call it attach. And I'm gonna show you why that is. Let's actually call this one attach as well. 
So for this one, I'm going to be placing it at the, basically at the very, so right about here. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to be able to grab the hammer. So the way that it's going to work is I'm going to be using this transform to tell the system where I'm going to be grabbing the hammer. So I can just bring it back. So think of it like a real hammer, right? You don't grab a hammer from here. You normally grab the hammer from the handle. So that's how that's going to work. On the paint though, I think we can, I think we can actually, actually rotate it. I think that should be okay. So on the paint, I'm going to do something similar. Let me go back into it. But let me see, right now it's on the, it's on the pivot point. And actually it's on the, yeah, on the pivot point on the bottom. And I can just move it up a tiny bit more. I'm going to also, let me change this to be local. And we can just go ahead and say that we're going to grab it. We can probably just grab it from the edge. Or we can grab it from this handle right here. I think, I think I'm just going to do it from right here. That way when we are grabbing it, it just looks more realistic, right? It doesn't look like we're grabbing it from here. It just looks like we're grabbing it from an area where we would grab in real life. Okay, so I think that works. I think that looks good. Okay, so now on the paint, we're going to be adding uh, XR Grab Interactable. Let's go ahead and add that. And then what I'm going to do here, there's a couple options. Well, there's actually a lot of options, but the one that I want to associate is going to be this Attach Transform. That's going to tell the system that I want to be able to attach and grab at this transform location, not at the parent transform location. And everything else looks okay. I'm just double checking. Then on the hammer, I'm going to do the same thing. It's going to go ahead and go into a component, add it, and I'm going to drag and drop the attach transform. So that's everything that we need to do on the objects that we need to grab. So now let's go ahead and create one more object, and I'm going to duplicate that, and I'll show you why that is. So this one is going to be the pain socket. I'm going to call it paint socket. I'm going to clone it. I'm going to put it right beneath the paint so that it's, you know, it's with the hammer. This one is going to be called the hammer socket. Awesome. And it should be at the same location. And yep, perfect. So I'm actually going to duplicate this as well one more time. I'm going to put it inside. I'm going to show you why that is as well. This one is going to be the socket transform. We can call it the socket attached, just like I did the other one. Perfect, and then we can also do the same thing on this other socket. I'm going to just go ahead and clone it and put it inside. Let me move this down a little bit. And then everything is a zero, 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 so that is clean. So for these sockets, I want to be able to put uh, the, the actual paint right on the bottom. So if I'm putting the paint back, I want the socket to be right about on the table. So let me go back here and let me double click on the paint. Let me make sure that, yep, so I'm going to move it just a tiny bit up. So we are at negative 0.17. We can just remember that number because we're going to be using that for the for the other socket. I'm also going to be doing that same thing here. But except I'm going to be, we, can, we actually need to place that one on the hammer. So if you look at the hammer, so this one right now, it's on this location. I'm just going to be grabbing this entire object. That way we can offset it automatically. And then we can just, you know, take it out. That way we, we have the locations, you know, respective to the world. And I think that looks fine. So if we look at the attachment here, it's going to be on the bottom. If we look at this one right here, it's going to be on the bottom. So that way, you know, if I put it back, it's going to be put back at this location. And the same thing with the pain. So, so, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and go into the pain socket. And I'm going to be adding a socket. So it's going to be the XR socket interactor. I'm also going to be doing the same thing on the hammer socket. Go ahead and hit enter. So now let's go into the paint socket and look at a couple of things that we need to do. So this has a starting selected interactable, and this is going to be very important because if we don't have this, it's not going to work. We need to associate the starting selected interactable with the paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that one on this one. And then we also need to do the same thing with the, with the hammer. So I'm going to go into my hammer socket, and I'm going to be selecting the hammer with the with this object right here. We can make this a little bit bigger so we can read the whole thing. Excellent. So the attach transform is going to be at this location. So I'm just going to I'm just going to be selecting this and then dragging it. And then we can do the same thing with the socket attach. And that's good. So right now this is great, but we don't really have a material. And I'm going to show you how we can assign. I don't want to use the one that Unity gave us because I that wouldn't explain really how it works. So what I'm going to do is, Unity has a lot of them here. So we can we can just create a new one. I'm just going to go ahead and create. 
and we can go into a material. This one is going to be selectable material. And it doesn't really matter how we call it. I just wanna, I just wanna make it something different. And for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and you know associate it with this so I can show you, I can show you how it's going to look. And instead of using opaque, we're going to be using transparent. Kind of see how that looks. And the other thing that I'm gonna do, I can just use a different color and how about a yellow type color or something that stands out. What about red? I think a red works. And, and then what I'll do is I'll change the the alpha value a little bit. So that's how the socket is gonna look as soon as we get closer to the to the socket area. Okay, so that looks good, but I don't want that material to be the material on the on, on the actual bucket. So let me go back. I'm going to be setting this to something like this. And what I could have done is I could just add a let's add a 3D object just for now. I'm gonna call it cube and then it's gonna drag it and drop it into here. That way we can see how the material looks like. So it's going to be again transparent. We're gonna go down to I think 189. It's fine, that works. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna delete it now that we have the material. Now if we go to the paint socket, what we need to do is we need to associate the selectable material with the interactable hover material. I'm gonna do the same thing on the hammer socket, drag it and drop it into that object. And so far this looks great, right? But we need to tell the socket that there is a collision. And how do we do that? We need to add a collider. So to do that, I'm going to be adding a new collider. This is going to be an sphere collider. I think that's the one, yep. And then I'm also going to make it trigger. And I'm gonna make sure that I change the radius. I'm gonna enable the edit collider, that way we can see. And that is, you know, that is giant. We don't want it to be that big. We can get closer, maybe something like Something like that, or how about a little bit bigger? Okay, so I think I think that works. That works fine, perfect. And everything else looks fine. So the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to be copying this sphere collider. And instead of me having to create it again, I'm just going to you know paste it on this other component, paste component as new. And then make sure that it's set to trigger. And that's honestly everything that we need to do to make this work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna show you how it looks. So I'm looking at the scene that we just built. It's gonna go ahead and rotate. We can just rotate, rotate, and then I'm just going to be going into my teleport. Get closer. So I can now grab the paint. I can get close to the socket and you can see how that's working. Can also do the same thing with the hammer. So as soon as I get to the bounding area, the also the actual socket is showing correctly. You can also throw it if I wanted to throw it. You can see how that snaps back into the socket. I can also throw it here. I can get closer and I can do that one more time. I can grab it with both of my... And remember that we changed the pivot point. That's why it's grabbing from, from this area. So I can go closer and then hide it. I can throw it. I can get back a little bit further and then throw it. You can see how that works. Let's see if I can get it in there again. That still works. I can do the same thing with the hammer. And let's go back a little bit more. There we go. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions on socket interactors, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code and also everything that I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you, guys.